Oh my goodness. Oh, look at the physics. Oh, oh, he's grown out of the pal. Oh, 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 that's it, guys. That's it. So if you're not familiar, uh, OpenAI has just broken the internet by announcing Sora, a text-to-video model, uh, which from a four-line or actually I should say forward prompt creates amazing lifelike images that pulverizes absolutely everything else on the market and in addition it can generate up to one minute you heard that correctly 60 second videos it's over for open source guys it's over pack up your bags sell your 4090s uninstall confi give up bye or maybe not Maybe we should rethink this a little bit and not fall for the hype. Because if we look a little bit closely, we realize that there is simply no text prompt that could have indicated to any model the details of these scenes, the clothing of the people in the background, the buildings that surround this lady, the way she walks, the way she moves, the clothing of this lady itself. In fact, there is a rough approximation of it over there, but you can tell there is just not enough words. In fact, if we're pausing this video, you can see that to describe this image in words, it probably take as many pages as the Bible contains. And here's the problem with those text to video engines is that there is no control. There is no consistency between generations. And in fact, that's why they're not showing you two generations from the same prompt. They're just showing you one generation because they know that if they were to rerun this prompt a second time, it would look completely different to the human eye. There cannot be any consistency because there's no IP adapter or control nets or any of this technology implemented here. It's purely text to video. It's basically runway or Pika and it's 10 times better. Look, I'm not criticizing on that technological front. In fact, thank you, Pom, from the Banodoko server for issuing this image where we see the occlusion that takes place. It's mind blowing. And I have to say uh, the fact that it's consistent between the steps where she gets in front of the sign and then moves away from the sign in itself is very worthy of all the technical praise that this tool is currently receiving. However, is this a good tool for movie makers? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. Because if I look at this scene, for example, and I'm thinking I'm a filmmaker and I want this scene in my movie, I'm going to want to choose the types of painting. If you watch John Wick 4, you know there is a scene with lots of paintings. The paintings are very carefully chosen to reflect what the characters are thinking and their current situation, etc. You have no such control here. And between generation, you will lose that control anyway. And likewise, the same is true for actors. So if we go to this generation here and we look at this gentleman, I can guarantee you that it's impossible to get his exact likeness into the next shot where he's not sitting on a cloud. Maybe he's playing basketball or whatever. You're trying to make a film after all. You know, film have this funny thing about them. They contain multiple scenes. I know, I know. Shocking, right? Now, look. Yes, it's brilliant for B-roll. There's absolutely no doubt that this is an exponential shift in technology, but there's a reason why we have tools like IP adapter, control nets, because we don't want to just tell the tool that this gentleman is sitting on a cloud. We want to actually position his hands correctly. That's why Hollywood is filled with animators that are not getting credit from these VFX studios because Hollywood doesn't like you knowing that most of their movies are entirely CGI at this point. And that's why consistency control is so important. And being able to reuse his likeness in the next shot is critical. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is with tools that are not text to video. And then the final point I want to make, and the reason why this isn't the apocalypse, the open source apocalypse, as some people are saying on the internet, is we know what OpenAI does with their tools because they've done it before. Do you remember DALI? Oh yeah, it, it's funny because the entire internet has just become amnesiac. I remember DALI when I was making photorealistic output. It looked completely real. What is this? I mean, I, I specifically ask for photorealistic. And you can type whatever you want in there. I'm trying to recreate the disaster girl meme, right? First of all, I'm lucky it didn't block me because I said little girl, you know, that in itself is a big no-no on the cloud server. But hey, you know, they're kind enough to show me a picture, but here's the, here's the fix to all their problems. Neuter the tool. That is their strategy, to neuter their tools. I mean, it's completely pointless. If I try to create a scene from John Wick, I can't and I won't be able to do it with Sora. How do I know this? Because it says it here, black on white. We won't allow it. And guess what, guys? Guess what people are watching in the movie theaters? Number one, action movie of all time, 
but according to IMDb, Kill Bill, Kill Bill 2. Well, these guys really like Tarantino, I suppose. But these movies are hyper violent. Even The Matrix is very violent. But yeah, never mind horror movies, for example. You'll never be able to make them with Sora. It's just period. It won't happen. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. That being said, I want to give a big extensive RIP to uh, the guys. If you look closely here, you can see it reads Pika and over there you can see it reads Runway. Yeah, I mean, sure, commercial tools that are bound by these limitations uh, have just been blown out of the water by this uh, engine, which by the way is not out yet and we don't even have a paper for it, but no one no one cares about that on the internet today. They just care about the hype. So I hope this video reassured you if you're an artist and you're currently busting your chops using IP adapter, using Confi UI and other tools of that nature. And you think, well, what's the point when they have this, the commercial guys? Yeah, also remember the copyrights, right? This I'll finish on this. These videos look a little bit too good to be true. And there's some fantastic discussion on the forums right now as to where is that data set coming from? <coughs> Pirated. I mean, sorry, it was borrowed. You know, fair use, right? Fair use to them, not fair use to you. In any case, guys, I don't think it's the end of the world is what I'm saying. I think it's a cool tool, but I'm getting back to Confi now and producing some cool stuff. See you.